you still feel like you're in a weird spot. Hi, I'm Milesy, and today we're going to be talking about tenting. And I don't mean going out into the woods and camping. This is a particular stitch, and it's one I get asked about probably two or three times a week. And I've actually tried to film this now a couple of times, and every time the video just failed in one way or another, so hopefully this works this time. That would be nice. But tenting is a stitch that I really like because it literally halves the amount of time it takes you to finish a full coverage piece. Now, I don't really recommend it for like a sampler or something that's going to have a lot of negative space to it. It really does only work for full coverage pieces or if you want to outline your piece in full stitches to make the whole thing look full. But it's basically just a way of cheating some extra time out of whatever you're working on. So that's why I really like it. It helps me go really fast. So the thing about tin stitch is that it does only cover a fraction of the space that a normal full stitch will do, which can cause some problems when you're just getting started because it's hard to know how that's going to affect your coverage. So right here I have some 14 count Ada and typically I would suggest using twice the amount of floss that you normally would to fill up the whole stitch. So on 14 count Ada, I would typically recommend using three strands. Some people like to do two. So let's just first show what that looks like here. So we're just going to take our floss here and we're going to do a couple of stitches in two strands just to show you. So here we go and we'll just do a quick loop because I like the loop start. And we'll do a couple of stitches, full stitch, and then we'll do a couple of stitches in tent just to show you. So here we have our full stitches, which on 14 count, you can kind of get away with this. It doesn't have the best coverage, but you know, Two is easier than three to use, so two is perfectly fine. So there we have our stitches in two strands, and now we're going to do some tent stitch. And I'll do them, and then I will explain them in a little bit. So we can see that although two strands covers up really nicely on the full stitches, it doesn't really cover at all on the tent stitches. And that's not nice. So we're just gonna get rid of this real quick. And that's an easy way to get rid of it. So what I always suggest is to use twice the amount of strands that you would normally use when you're using tent stitch. So we have two strands here. Now we have four on the needle. And we're just going to do a couple of stitches really quick. And this is what four strands of coverage on 14 count looks like. And that's looking a little bit better, isn't it? And let's just get rid of this up here out of the way. So that's what two strands looks like. Now we'll see what three and six look like. And since we're using an odd number, we'll come up from the bottom. And just like this, here we go. So this is three strands of coverage on full stitches. And now we have one. And already you can see that it is doing a much better job, stay in there, of covering up the fabric, which we expect because we're using more strands. But then if we use three strands on tent, we can see that it kind of does the same thing as before. It just doesn't really cover anything up at all. So we'll 
bring this up here, cut it and we'll turn it into six. Now, ordinarily, I don't really recommend doing tent stitch on 14 count just cause you do wind up having to use six whole strands of floss to do this. And I don't recommend just since these things right here are six strands, just cutting off a length and using that. It, it won't look as nice. You still want to separate out the strands and do it that way just cause they'll lay a little bit more evenly. Okay, so now that we've spent a few minutes swearing and trying to get six strands threaded onto our needle, let's just take a look and see how it looks once we start actually stitching with it. And already we can see that it is actually covering up the fabric underneath and you're not really going to see a whole bunch there and we'll do a second row just to show you. And there we go. There's that. How nice. Lovely. Let's get rid of that. So now that we know how many strands to use, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about how to do the actual stitch. And on the surface, it is basically just a half stitch. It is that easy, but you do have several different ways of doing that. And there are a few different reasons why you want to. Okay, so I'm only going to be using two strands here just to show you what it looks like and so that you can more easily see what I'm doing. But we're going to come in for our first stitch right here and get in the loop, there we go. And in we go. So what we can do is we can come up through here and we can just run the stitch like this as you normally would if you were doing a row of half stitches and then coming back to complete it later. And I do my tent stitches like this sometimes. Uh, if I'm not really worried about the fabric getting in the way of my stitching. But sometimes on uh, higher counts, uh, once you get to about 22, you're no longer actually using Ada. And I am going to be talking in a future video what that means when we say Ada or Hardanger or even weave. Uh, these just refer to the type of weave on the fabric and the type of weave can drastically affect your stitching. So when we come in through the top right here and go in through the bottom, as is kind of the natural way to stitch, what winds up happening is when we pull back up through the top, this part of the stitch is actually getting pulled in this direction upward. And that kind of makes it not quite go at as much of a 45 degree angle, which can cause problems in some of the weaves where you don't have this bit right here in the middle where the threads are all kind of woven together in a way that your needle or that your thread isn't going to slip up through here. But once you get into higher counts, this part of the stitch can actually slip up, making your stitch look like this. And we don't want that. That's not going to cover anything at all. So what you want to do actually is come up from the bottom and then go in through the top. And then you come up from the bottom and you go in through the top. And what this does is now that the thread is coming through here, it actually pulls it back down this direction toward this hole. So it's coming this way and making it want to sit more at the 45 degree angle that it wants to. And there's nowhere for this to slip now because this hole is not connected to this hole, so it is just going to kind of stay exactly where you put it, even if you're using a different fabric weave. And then when we get down now to this row, instead of continuing to come up from here and down through there, that's no good because you're going to run into the same problem. You're going to come up from the top and go down. Up from the top and go down. And this will keep all of your stitches in place and keep them all sitting in the same direction even if you're skipping stitches around a little bit because sometimes we don't want to 
stitch those few stitches right there. There's a gap and another color is going to go there. But we're still pulling this part of the stitch up this direction away from itself so it's still going to want to lay properly. But there we go. That is just the basics of tent stitch. It's a really simple stitch. It goes super quickly because you're not having to do the same stitch twice effectively like you are with a full cross. It can just be a little bit fiddly because you're having to have more thread on your needle at the same time, but ultimately it does balance out and you are using the same amount of floss in the end. But hopefully you guys found this helpful. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about this and I've been saying I'm going to do it and hopefully here it is. We'll see how the video turns out. But if you have any comments, questions, anything like that, put them down in the comments below because I love to hear them and I am always here to answer them. But until then, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, all that fun stuff, and I will see you next time. Bye! Thank you for watching. If you would like to support future videos and get some neat stuff in return, please head over to my Patreon page. Your support means a lot to me and goes a long way. If you're not in a position to donate, consider sharing this video with your friends to help this channel grow. Otherwise, please enjoy this goat. This really better turn out.